And this one, ladies and gentlemen, just simply I'm going to write the formula for you. The volume of a cylinder. Please write this out. It's not, well, it's kind of long actually. The volume of a cylinder equals 2 times pi times radius times radius. Oh, I guess it doesn't matter. Times the height. This is wrong. Hold on a second. Right, is it 2 pi? Is that what it is? 2 times pi, 2 pi, however you want to write it. Oh, I didn't know if it was like 2 times pi times radius times radius times height. Got that. So if you are given a cylinder, say that looks like this, and they tell you that the diameter of the cylinder is, I don't know, 8 inches, the height, is 10 inches. You simply just need to fill in the blanks. Um, in this case, it would look like this. What's pi? We'll use 3.14. What's the radius? What's the radius? Somebody radius. Four. Thank you. Four. What's the height? And you can multiply it in any fashion, any way you want. It doesn't matter. Uh, you know, 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 10 is 160. 2 times 3.14 is 6.28. You're going to end up multiplying those two things together. I'm not so concerned about your ability to multiply, though. I suppose for some of you, I should be. I don't know that. I'm concerned about my ability to multiply. What are we going to get here? 0, 48, 4, 12, 16, 37. Two zeros. 6, 2, 8, 0, 8, 4, 9, 9. And this is volume, so it would be measured in what? Somebody? Either cubes. Cubic inches, right. We're a little slow today. So that's your whole cylinder volume thing. Unfortunately, that's not the hard part. The hard part comes now. Volume of prisms. What's a prism? It's where you go when you've committed a Prisms come in many shapes and sizes. Um, they look a little like this. You can have a prism that's made out of rectangles. <coughs> and it is a rectangular prism. You could have a prism that's made out of triangles. And it is a triangular prism. <coughs> you could have a prism that might be made out of a hexagon. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this thing would be a hexagonal prism. The question is, how do we find volume of a prism? What? No answers? For all the hijinks and the shenanigans that we've played already today, nobody can answer this one simple question? First of all, you already know how to find volume of this band, this thing. It's a box. How do you find the volume of a box? Side times side. Length times width times height. You need to forget that for now. Don't write that down. Because volume of pr prisms is this. And I, this it seems like deja vu because it seems like we've talked about this. 
The volume of prisms is very simply this. The area of the base times the height. The area of the base times the height. Uh, well, there is some surface area stuff in that. You do have to find the area of the base with surface area too, so there is somewhat there. Now, this is the same. I think we talked about this with surface area. Okay. In order for you to actually do this, you have to know what the base is. Okay, and what the height is. If you don't know what those two things are, there's no point in even finding them because you're going to multiply the wrong numbers together. How do I know what the base is? I think I gave you my theory way back. When? In this shape, in this shape, in this shape, what are the bases of those shapes? Ava? Where you could cut it and then all the same. Thank you. I like to call that the loaf of bread theory. Oh, I remember that. I remember that. Okay. In other words, when you have the prism in your hand, or wherever, laying on the countertop, in what direction would you slice it so that when you took that loaf of bread, stuck it in the toaster, you get the exact same shape looking piece all the time? Now, the thing with a rectangular prism is there's a bunch of different answers because you could cut it in any direction and you're always going to get this, the rectangle. I could call this right here the base, and if I keep slicing it on this line, I'm still going to get this exact shape rectangle all the way through. That's not the case, though, and that's why it doesn't matter with the rectangle. You can rectangular prisms. You can use that length times width times height thing because it doesn't matter. But these here, it does matter. Okay, if this is my loaf of bread, this triangular prism, and I'm trying to slice it so that every piece is the exact same shape, doesn't get bigger, smaller, whatever. Which way? What what shape is that piece going to be in? Triangle. It's going to be this triangle. Okay, because if you keep slicing it along those lines, you're still going to get that triangle. So this has to be the base on this uh, hexagonal prism. The base is going to be shaped in what form? There, Sam Poppin. Right. It's going to be this shape right here. That's the base. Right. So when you're finding the and we'll do this a little later. When you find the volume, your first step is you have to find the area of those bases. Okay. In which case, if this is a triangle, you have to use the triangle formula for area, which is area is one half base times height. I don't think we have a formula for the hexagon, but I don't know if we do that anyways. The second question we have to know is what is the height? Because a lot of times we get confused in thinking that how high the object is is the height. And in this case, that is not the height that I have there. What do we know? Anytime we talk about bases and heights in any shapes, what has to be true about them? Like in a triangle, we've used the whole base height. What has to be true, Kyle? Just to make a right angle. Exactly. The word we use is perpendicular. Okay. So if I'm looking for the height of this shape, what you have to think is this. You have to think that you're going to set it on its base, and then how tall will it be there? If I took this triangle, set it down, or the side that's perpendicular, the line that forms the right angle to the base is this line shooting off like this. This is actually the height of this shape. Because if I took it, laid it on top of its base, how tall does it stand? That's the perpendicular part of it. This would be the height. Same thing here. What's the height of this? Lovely, lovely hexagonal prism. It is this like this distance from here to here. Because if I set it on the hexagon, how tall would it stand to be that tall sticking up there? So that's the height. Everybody's happy. Now we move on to the real problem. Let's do one straight out of. Uh, maybe we should do a triangle. Yeah, let's do a triangle. Right out of the book. Probably practice A if anybody even follows along in the book. You don't have to. Practice A is this. It looks like the outside campus and it's a tent. Not a very good tent, but a tent in the box. And here are our dimensions of this tent. 
called up the Gilder Springs to the line here. She's out here at feet from six feet. And can I tell you, this can be incredibly confusing because with this triangular prism here, and with what we're doing, there are two different heights that you have to look at. You have to look at the height of the base, and you have to look at the height of the shape itself. So you've got to organize your thoughts here. What's the first thing I'm doing after I draw my little picture here? Morgan? You write the formula. Very good. So you're going to write down volume equals the area, and you can abbreviate that, AOB. Everything's not working. It doesn't work right in the middle here. Times the height. Okay. Now I would sit down and try to establish what is, first of all, what is the base? What shape is the base? Okay, the loaf of bread theory says that this right here is going to be the base. So I would write down here the area of the triangle. And then right away, so I don't forget to do this, I would write down the dimension of the height. How tall is that shape if it was sitting on its base? I want the height of the object here, not the height of the base. Okay, Five is the height of the base. Seven is the height of the prism. So you want the height of the prism, the thing that's perpendicular to the base, so you want a seven there. Whatever you get for the area of the triangle is going to get multiplied by seven. Okay, so now I'm working my way here. Area of a triangle is one half. Here's where people get confused because now I'm talking about base and height again. But it's not the base and height, base and height of the prism, it's the base and the height of the base of the prism. Which gets a little confusing. What are the two numbers I'm going to multiply together to get half of? Looking only at the triangle, maybe you should redraw, and the book does have you do that, you should redraw the base so you're not looking at the rest of it. You know this is 5 and you know this is 6. Okay, what are the base and the height? Kyle? 30. You're going to say 30 is the base and the height? You have to take half of that, right? Yeah. One half of 5 times 6, which is half of 30, which is 15. And then you have to multiply that still by the height of the whole shape. You're going to get 105 feet cubed. Well, and there's no, the only thing I can do is you got to try to feel. You got to try to organize your thoughts and keep all this straight. That's why you have to write down just about everything. Maybe you should just draw draw the the base so that you know that you're just finding base. That's why I had you put the 7 down first because, again, I said there's two different heights. One of them is the height of the base. One of them is the height of the whole prism. They're two different numbers because this is the height of the shape when you set it on its base. This is a triangle, so it has its own height. Kendall? So what happened to the area of the base and the volume of the thing? What happened to the area of the base? Right here is the area of the base. I just did that when I multiplied <coughs> one half times base times height. Because that's the area of the triangle. So that's you don't find like the area or the volume of that and then add it with the so There's no volume. This. this is a flat shape. There's a volume to the prism. There's not going to be a volume to the triangle. So you don't find the volume and then add it to that? Um, no. As far as I know. Yeah. Follow the steps as they're written down here to make you really happy. I know because you want to, we're going to do something just a touch bit more complicated. Well, man, no. Man, no. No, no. Let's do it. Look at your books on page 70, or 511. And this again is why. Ladies and gentlemen, I have plenty of big pieces of paper with big squares written out. You cannot take a piece of the normal paper with separated into 30 squares and think that you have anywhere near enough room to do this. So you need to do some big stuff. As a matter of fact, take out a blank piece of paper. It can be lined. I don't care. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be a homework piece of paper. We are going to do 
letter C all together as one big happy family with me holding your hand and seeing if we can't muddle our way through it. Because this one's going to be about as hard as it gets. I would say. Yep. First thing you're going to do is draw that garage. And I believe you get to ignore any overhangs. So you're just going to draw this. Again, um, it's always best if you take your pen off the piece of paper when you draw lines. It just makes them nice and straight. Just shoot off here in a little angle. Make this the same distance. Go straight up. Here's my roof. Here's my roof. Fill in the blanks with the numbers 12 feet high. How wide is this shape? It looks like it is 20 feet by 25 feet. And the walls are 8 feet tall. It's just 20 by 20. It's 20 by 20? Yeah. And we are looking for volume. So the first thing we are going to do is write down our prism volume formula, which just so happens to be Josh. Um, uh, area of Stop me there if you're confused on that. First, I just drew the picture exactly as it is in the book. Secondly, I just wrote down the formula. The confusion there. All right. So now we have to establish what is the base and what is the height of this prism. Okay. So using the ever popular loaf of bread theory, if this thing was a loaf of bread, which it actually looks a little bit like. What is going to be the shape of that loaf of bread, Charlie? No. It's actually a pentagon, but it's a, what do we call it? It looks like the house face. So I would make, I would write that down here. So I'm going to take the area of this shape right here. So that you know what shape you're looking for the area. And maybe you want to just draw that shape over here nice and big so that you can find the area of it. And at this point, again, just to get things so I don't get confused later on, what is the height, this H, which is perpendicular to that thing? If you set it on top of that shape, how tall would it stand? Sam? 20. Exactly. 20 feet. Okay, here was the base. If I flipped it on the base, how tall would it stand? That 20 would come up and it's 20. Stop me there if you don't get that. So really, all, okay, what part don't, but don't you get there? How I got the height? Okay. Do you know how I got the base, Taylor? Yeah. Okay. If I actually had this shape in my hand, and I turned it, and I sat it on top of its base. Like this. Like, you had it like this, you had it like this, and then you had it like this. I believe that's, I think we're all on the same page here. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, here, here actually is the shape pretty close to it. Right now it's looking like this. I want to take it, set it on its base. How tall would it be? Take it, base, tall. Flip it with page 20 because it's the side. It is 20. Oh, that's it. Okay. But see, what I don't want you to confuse is there's also a height to the shape that we're going to talk about. This is the height of the prism. These, this line here is going to be the height of that shape. There's two different heights. They have to be used at two different times. And then the height of that shape is 12. Right. The problem is, the problem is, though, we have to take this shape and actually cut it. In order to find the area of this shape, what do we have to do? Because we don't have a formula that finds area of pentagons. You're going to have to... Cut it into two shapes you can find areas of, which would be 
Yeah, you're going to cut it like this. Find the area of this, which should be easy. It's 20 times, how tall is this? 20 times 8, because it's the same as that height there. 20 times 8. So I know this is 160. And then I have to add that to what the height of, or what the area of this triangle piece is here. Which, then I have to use the formula for the area of a triangle, which is 1 half base times height. Anybody care to speculate what the base or the height is here? If I cut this like this, what's the distance from here to here? What's the distance from there to there? Well, it is from here to here, it's 20. And the height would be from here to here? 4, because it's 8 from here to here. So the 12 would give you 4. 20 times 4 is 80. Cut in half because it's a triangle makes this 40, giving me a total area of the base of 40 plus 160 is 200. Now I know this part of my proverbial puzzle. I put my 200 in back in my formula. I know my other number I multiply by is 20. I multiply the 200 times the 20, and the volume then, ladies and gentlemen, ends up being 4,000 feet cubed. Volume is always cubed. But once again, children, there are so many steps to this, and there's so many places to get confused and lost track. You know, a new song comes on your eye, whatever you're listening to, and you get distracted, and you lose your place. You're going to get all messed up unless you jot this stuff down and keep it organized. Again, you're going to you have enough stuff here to probably take up. You can take up almost a whole piece of homework paper to do this, really, to keep yourself organized. Because if you start trying to scrunch this into a little thing, and you can't read your numbers or whatever. You're just behind that. Questions on this again. Where are the 200 feet from? Area, area of this shape right here. The 8 times 20 is 160. Area of this was a triangle. That was 20 by 4. Cut in half. 40. Put them together. Taylor. So if the width Because this was a complex shape, that's why we had to cut it into two pieces. Will they have here. complex shapes? In well, here? I told you this was a hard one, and most of them are not so bad. I don't know. I don't think so. You can always try. They look very difficult. That's why it was going to do it. Actually, that whole page five twelve looks like they're just a great. <laughs> 